guys, how you doing this morning? This is going to be a long video, so grab yourself a drink, coffee, beer, whatever, uh, and sit down, because this will be a long one. So, <clears throat> basically, uh, last night I got very depressed, and I just uh, had a little bit of a freak out on on YouTube, and I just, you know, I'm, I'm bipolar. I mean, I am. I get, I never really get, like, the manic stage. I get to where I'm calm and okay, or I get, like, really, really fucking depressed. It doesn't help. And what, what's going to help me is the right kind of environment, being around people that actually care about me, having things... You know, it, it's interesting because when I had the car, the house, the furniture, I was calm. I, I, I never really got depressed or angry a couple of times, but it was always in relation to me getting whiny about YouTube trolls and all that other shit that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I'm going to be gross in this video because... Like I got something in my mouth, it's disgusting. Anyway, so I need some denture cream. It's like you put it on. Sometimes I put on too much, or I don't put it on the dentures correctly, so then it like squeezes out into the mouth. It's horrible. It's disgusting. Oh, so. Yeah, this is uh, what the room now looks like after moving 99% of my stuff out. I still gotta, I've still got to uh, remove the blankets off the bed, the backpack, extension cord. Uh, put the garbage bag. I'm gonna put the blankets and stuff in. Um, the bookshelf. I'm gonna obviously leave. There's, you know, the thing that is, is no matter where I go, whether it's out of state or whatever. Um, and that, that's the kind of the nice thing about the nomadic lifestyle, about Western culture is, like, with this bookshelf, right, I spend a hundred bucks on a bookshelf just to have it, which was kind of a stupid thing. I mean, I should have been shit saving up for a fucking car. Um, but see, the thing of it is, when you move into one of these, uh, sober living houses, but there's one of these programs... They tell you all kinds of shit. Oh yeah, we're gonna help you find a job, we're gonna help you find permanent housing, we're gonna do this, blah, 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 blah. And it's been damn near a year. And they ain't done shit. They just keep making promises they can't keep. And I'm a dumbass because I believed their fucking bullshit. I keep, I keep waiting for authority figures or people with power to actually do what they do what they say they're gonna do, but they only do that if it benefits them in some way, and it makes me miserable in the process. It's fucking irritating. Um, what happened is Healthright, the guy who owns this, the guy who's um, he's a middleman, but he's managing it and he's trying to purchase this big apartment complex thing to do this over there. There, there is a lot of money in this. There's a lot of fucking money. You'd be surprised how much money. There's actually a couple of guys uh, still here, and they're paying rent. They're paying like six hundred a month, um, which I just I don't see that as a good investment because then I'm going to be trapped in poverty and squalor. Um, <laughs> so how is that different from yeah? Um, I just, no, I, I probably need a, a change of location anyway. Um, anyway, back to, back to what Hellfire did is they owed him like $15,000 for, you know, parolees and people on the EB-109 program. They've got like so many fucking programs, it's ridiculous. 
Um, so they, they were supposed to be paying him $15,000. That's what they owed him. They give him a check for 6000 He says, no, I need it all. Now, the reason they give him a check for 6000 is because were he to take that check, that would be an unspoken agreement that he's going to wait for the money. He would not be able to sue in good faith. So he's just like, no, I'm... You know, I'm doing a different program, and Hellfright has screwed him over before. I mean, if it, oh my god, that that Hellfright place that I was in, it was a fucking, I mean, good lord. Um, you, you, that shit could be a reality show, literally. Um, so, yeah, everybody's up. I'm, I've requested a place by the beach. Um... So I'm not sure where they're going to put me, but I figure, you know, I, I, I figure anything west of downtown LA is going to give me better access to the beach. So I don't know where they're going to put me. They could, they could put me in Long Beach, Venice Beach. They could put me in fucking Hollywood. They could put me wherever. I know there were a bunch of guys going to um, different places around here, but a lot of this, that, that, that's one of the biggest stressors, though. Is because when you move into one of these places, the first one that I was in um, was in North Hollywood, and you literally had four people to a room. Everybody was on top of each other. The person, and the people in charge of it, were just um, a little bit nutty, and I mean. We, we, when you go into a sober living house, you're supposed to be transitioning to society, not feeling like it's just another fucking cage. And that's the big problem with a lot of these places, is they're just a big fucking cage. And this this one's not. This one here at Altadena, this is a really nice, I mean, really nice one. Um, and I'm kind of pissed off that how I fucked it up. But, of course, you know, and the thing of it is, is of course, they'll have to transfer all my paperwork and shit, which by the time the paperwork gets transferred, my probation will be over and I will no longer qualify for their services. Now some idiot's gonna say, why don't you just break probation? No. I, I'm not doing this bullshit again. Um, now, let's see, do I wanna show you this area before? Just a second, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that.